What's going on, America? Today, I want to come to you with another, there's not gonna be a V-shaped recovery based upon the evidence video. And I wanna talk to you, America. I wanna give you, let's have a little conversation because I know no one likes bad news. No one wants to hear it because I, I keep having these people on my Facebook timeline who keep saying there's gonna be a V-shaped recovery. And I'm about to give you some evidence. I'm about to give you facts. I'm not about to give you hyperbole. I'm about to give you facts on why there will not be a V-shaped recovery. And I understand how everyone is hopeful that we will bounce back and life will go on and this virus thing will go away. I totally get that. I totally get that. That's just human nature. But the reality is you guys, America, need to buckle in for the long haul, because here, here's my policy. I feel that you're an adult. We're, we're having an adult conversation. And if you get the truth, you're gonna make better decisions versus hoping for fantasies. Because I'm about to tell you some stuff that no, one's ever el no one else has ever told you and no one else will ever tell you. If this is your first time here, what I want you to do is to download 30 days to $2,500 and the Hustler's Mindset audiobook so you can begin strengthening your mindset and you can begin making some side money. Go ahead and do that. And let's have this conversation. America, I've been talking about this coming recession for three years. Now, now I had no clue that we were gonna have this pandemic. I'm not gonna take claim for that, but why have I been talking for three years about this coming recession? Why have I been talking about it? Because see, here is the crux of why there isn't going to be a V-shaped recovery. Because the economy was weak before the pandemic. That's the part that so many of these people who were believing in this strength, because all right, let me, let me just give you the facts. If the economy was as strong as you were led to believe, we would not have almost 10% of the people who own houses with mortgages and forbearance. 10% of the people who own houses, who have mortgages, 10% are in forbearance, 10%. If we, because let, let me go ahead and go way, way back in time to the 1950s Detroit. Do you know in the 1950s, Detroit was the second, Detroit, Motor City, Motown was the second largest economy in the world after the United States. Detroit, the, the city of Detroit was the second largest economy. And with this great, robust, amazing economy, you could not even, you wouldn't even have to graduate high school. You could go work for Ford, Pontiac, remember them, they're no longer in business, GM. You could work for any of these car manufacturers or one of their subsidiaries and literally work your way up the ladder. You could not even have a college degree and you could have become a vice president at Ford. That's when economic upward mobility was real in America. Now, what happened? Some smart MBA said like, if we take our production to Japan, cause that's where it went. It went to Japan first, then it went to China. Then we could save a lot of money cause we don't have to pay them what we have to pay the people here in America. When Henry Ford came out with the Model T, he paid the people who made the Model T a wage where they could afford the product they were making. Crazy ideal, right? Crazy ideal. So America was much stronger back then. This is why your granddad was able to work one job. Your mother was able to stay home and raise you because, you know, I never went to daycare. I'm kind of a product that was born in the sixties. I never went to daycare because my grandmother raised me. My grandmother taught me to read. It was a different America back then. So take that as a, to compare and contrast with the gig worker economy where people are working two to three jobs. 
because they, they can't make it on one job. Talk, you know, don't believe me. Go to YouTube and look up the situation of the gig workers. Look up the situation of the people who are doing Airbnb. Essentially, we got away from the position of ownership. Uber, largest transportation company in the world. They don't own any cars. Airbnb, largest hotel in the world. They don't own any hotels. So we got, a, got rid of ownership and the hassles that came from ownership and created this fake ass gig economy. This is why it was so weak because back then, going back to the 50s and the 60s, people used to have 10 and 15 year mortgages. They were able, they would pay off their house and they would burn the deed because it was like, we own this puppy. America has radically transformed. And America, what I want you to understand is this transformation wasn't good for you. It wasn't good at all. Because what happened is you got screwed. How did you get screwed? Your grandfather had a pension, whether he worked in the coal mine, the steel mine, the transit authority. Granddad had a pension, which means that he worked for a company for many, many years. And when he reached retirement age, they said, here's some money. You got suckered into a 401k. Now, why is this important? Well, first of all, your granddaddy got to use more of his check to raise your mom and dad. He was able to make less and do more because he did not have to have a 401k deduction coming out of his check. Now, once again, remember, the recommendations is for you to save 15 to 20 percent of your paycheck for your retirement. Your granddad didn't have that burden. And 15 to 20 percent is a grip. You make sixty thousand dollars a year. That's 15 K that you should be putting away for your future retirement. So you got screwed with the 401k. So that was another reason that the economy wasn't as strong because your granddad could go work at the plant, work at the factory, and when he retired, he got a gold watch, he got a pension, and he was able to live out his life in his paid off house. This is where you got really, really screwed because the social mores have changed. It used to be very rare that someone would enter into retirement with mortgage level debt. It's very common now. One of the largest in sectors of bankruptcy filing are elderly people. Because once again, I've mentioned it before, the great American credit and indoctrination system. It literally has people convinced that I'll do it on credit. I'm not gonna use cash, I'm gonna do it on credit. So America, you got screwed from a social transformation. You got screwed from a corporate transformation and you got screwed from a retirement transformation. Now, where does this leave you today? You have a job. Oh, something else that screwed you, America. For about 40 years, you've not had a cost of living wage increase. Back in 1991, when I was working at the hospital, I started off at $12 an hour and I got the 20 bucks an hour. What's considered a good wage today? 10, 12, 13 bucks an hour. It hasn't moved, but you've had 40 years of inflation to eat at your dollar. So your $10 is like worth five because you've not had a real living wage increase. And when, it, when the wages start to increase, then we had this thing happen because wages have been going up for like four years, but four years out of 40 doesn't eradicate the damage that came from the 36 years where you were making a substandard wage. Once again, this is part of the corporate transformation. This is why over half of the country makes less than $33,000 a year. So this set the stage for where we are today. Because you weren't making the money, America, you didn't have any money to save. I mean, let's be real. Let's keep it a buck on these internet streets. You're making $33,000 a year. 
your mortgage, your rent's like a G, you're only bringing home 2,500, it's pretty hard to save money. Plus, due to the great American credit and indoctrination system, you were not encouraged to save money because it was no longer a social mandate. So you just go out here, you work, you spend your money, you buy a few creature comforts, and then shoo, here comes the pandemic. Takes the rug from under your feet. You were living your life. You was looking forward to the summer. You know, with sexy Susan, big booty Betty, you were like, hey, I'm going to do my thing. And then this pandemic pulled the rug. Because see, here's the thing. If America was as strong economically as you was led to believe, this pandemic thing wouldn't be so bad. Why? Because people would have had two emergency funds. Go to my channel, Savage Finance. I will teach you how to properly handle your money. If you had been listening to me in 2019 and took action, you would be in a better position. But America, I know I'm your favorite internet celebrity and y'all didn't know about me. So, you know, it, it is what it is. But America, understand the die was cast for this to be very, very bad. Let's talk about some other facts. Remember Toys R Us? When did Toys R Us close? <laughs> During the so-called good times. When did Sears close? <laughs> During the good times. So these venerable brands that have been around for decades closed during the good times. Why did they close? Because of the great American credit indoctrination system. They had too much debt. So now this is one of the things, the retail apocalypse, which was on and popping before the pandemic. We had major brands closing left and right before the pandemic and see here's the thing like people will tell you because they don't look at the numbers like i look at the numbers i'll tell you the numbers they will tell you that the reason that all of these stores and stuff has closed because amazon amazon like internet sales represent 12 percent of the economy amazon has six percent of internet sales amazon has 50 percent of internet sales wait a minute 12% of the economy, that means 88% of the economy was out here. Huh. And these stores were still closing. So it wasn't Amazon. It was a lot of corporate problems. It was bad management. But it wasn't Amazon. Anyone that tells you that it was Amazon doesn't know the numbers. And when these stores were closing, when Sears went out of business, when toys went out of business, Amazon only was getting like 4% of internet sales because it was only 9%. So it wasn't Amazon. These businesses were transforming and going out of businesses because of one of the largest demographic segments in America. Millennials. Millennials are the largest demographic in America. I think it's 71, 72 million of them. Now, hold on. We're about to start cooking with some gas. Now, what, what happened to the millennials? They got indoctrinated in the great American credit syndrome. They got indoctrinated. They got student loan debt. They got car payments. They got credit card payments. Now, there's this book called Upshift, which talks about the power of demographics. Millennials have even changed the dog food business because they don't buy regular dog food for their dogs. Dogs are considered a, a, a family member. We're, we, we go, we're going to treat little Fido with some good dog food. So millennials have reshaped and changed many industries. With a millennial, if you can't make an appointment on the website, they don't want to do business with you. They don't like talking on the phone. But here's one of the problems with millennials. Millennials, on average, don't have the money that their parents had. There, you know, there's like 25% of millennials have 
like 100, 100, 100 six figures in money. But 75% of millennials are broke. But why are millennials broke? Because they're ladding up with student loan debt. They're ladding up with credit card debt. They have all of this stuff. So all these millennials are broke and they cannot support these economies. Do you know that many of these houses on these golf courses, their value has been decimated because millennials didn't have the money nor the desire. They didn't really want to buy a house that big. So that whole segment started to suffer. Golf closures started closing during the good times before the pandemic. See, America, I want you to understand the millennials, because they have less money to put into the economy, this brought the economy down before the pandemic. See, this thing that we have going on, the pandemic made it happen way faster. Just like the recession that happened after 9-11, that made it happen faster. So we have the largest demographic in America, which is 75% of them are poor. They don't have any money. You, you see what I'm saying, America? The fake ass American economy was never that strong because the largest demographic in America, they don't have no money. They can't afford nothing. They're mired in debt. This is why Sears went out of business. This is why many now also millennials don't have any money. And this has shaped industry after industry. But see, here's something else, America, and I'm about to give you some facts and you can go ahead, Google it, research it, check it out for yourself. We're at the cusp of where literally 43% of small businesses are on the verge of closing and collapsing. Google it. You will find out that I'm telling you the truth, America. Now, with that means that we're going to have high unemployment. So now we're, we're cooking with gas. Now we're about to get into good stuff. Since we're going to have high unemployment, this is going to drag on the economy. Also, remember the 10% of Americans with mortgages who are in forbearance? This is going to cause a crash in the real estate market because many of these people were not financially literate. They should have took a deferment versus a forbearance, meaning put the mortgage payments at the end of the loan versus being, because many of them, many of these forbearance, forbearances are toxic. They're literally ticking time bombs because many of these Americans who have forbearances are many of the Americans who have been laid off. So they're not going to be able to requalify for another loan. So we have massive business closings. We have massive unemployment. We have collapse of a real estate market. Where is this V-shaped recovery coming from? Where is it coming from, America? These are facts. I just gave you facts. I did not make up any of this stuff. You can research it. You can check it out. So we got, and also the millennials who are literally getting crushed financially, largest demographic in America. Where's this V-shaped recovery coming from? I know that Trump and Steve Mnuchin are telling you, for, well, third quarter, we're gonna really start turning things around. Let me go ahead and give you some business owner math. Let's talk about the velocity of money, America. When you have a business, cash flow is king. When you have cash coming in, this is how you pay your rent, this is how you pay your employees, and it's a finely tuned balance of getting cash in, paying bills. And many American businesses are improperly run because they don't have the proper segmentation. So many of these small business owners were vulnerable to begin with. Now you go ahead and stop the money. This creates all types of nasty stuff. Employees don't get paid. Rent doesn't get paid. Oh, did I mention what was going to happen to the commercial real estate market? 
All of these businesses are not paying rent. And many of these commercial real estate REITs are funded by institutions like pension plans. You see where I'm going, America? Do the research. Look it up. Look at where the monies are. So people are unemployed. Housing foreclosures explode. The millennials get crushed. Commercial real estate takes a bath. And then it trickles up to the pension funds who don't get their money, which means your granddaddy's pension, your granddaddy got to climb into a truck to support mama because they don't have no money coming in. And your granddaddy 91 and mama 89, but she ain't well. See, once you start to dive into the math and look at the facts, this whole V-shaped recovery stuff is a pure fantasy. And also something else, Warren Buffett is sitting on billions. Stanley Druckenmiller said, it's, it literally came out and said, this V-shaped recovery is a fantasy. Why are all of the old rich dudes saying the same thing I'm saying? You know why? They've seen this before. They've been through bad times. They know what a bad economy looks like and they recognize it when they see it. We're in a bad economy. We're in a global recession. But Trump, and you know, Trump is an election year. I understand why Trump's saying, well, we're gonna bounce back. That's the only thing that Trump had to hang his hat on was the economy. Well, the stock market. The Fed's doing double monkey backflips all over bonds and they're, they're the buyer of last resort. And even Jerome Powell has come out and said, even what, what we're doing, we still need more. We need Congress to act to pass a fiscal stimulus for the American people because we can only do so much on our end with the tools that Jerome, Google it, listen to the speech. He says, we have the power of lending, but we don't have the power of taxation and spending from his own lips. So all of the old dudes are pretty much where I'm at, except for Trump. And Trump has an agenda. He wants to be reelected. He doesn't want to be a one term president. And I don't even know what's going to happen because Biden is saying crazy stuff. Like, if you don't vote for Biden, you ain't black enough. I'm like, where did that come from? I don't understand. But America, here's the big problem. America was fragile before this happened. I want you to understand that all of these people who were late on their car payments, I want you to understand all of these people who were late on their credit cards, all these people, and also, if you live in Houston, Houston's starting evictions again. So we're going to see a lot of pain. America, I, I understand that no one likes bad news. I, I, I get that. But what is one to do? I got a few solutions for you, America. Stop contributing to your 401k. I know that sounds drastic. Stop investing in the stock market. I know that sounds drastic and start stacking your cash. We don't know how long this thing's going to last because there's not going to be a V-shaped recovery. I, I know that people are whispering in your ear. We going to bounce back. You know, all these companies that they just go hire all their employees back and we going to be fine. 43% of them are on the verge of going out of business. The restaurant, it is fully estimated that literally one third, one fourth of restaurants will not reopen. One fourth. Disney's gonna be hit. Now, once again, and also America, the state's gonna keep open. I don't care what the infection rate does. I don't care if the hospitals get swamped. The state's gonna keep opening because the powers that have be have calculated how much this costs. Now, this is where we get into it. No one else that does these stimulus check videos ever even talks about this. We are in danger this year of having our GDP lower than our national debt. 
that's scary. That's problematic. That's going to cause a lot of problems in the future. Why? And I'm almost sure this is going to happen because we just cranked up 6.6 .6 trillion onto the national debt. And if the Democrats win the Senate, <clears throat> we're going to have probably another 10 million tacked onto the national debt. Because, you know, I, I know there's some people who, who get really political and these are some desperate times. And I, I have a feeling that many Republicans are going to vote Democrat for the first time in their lives because the Democrats want to give you some money, America. They want to give you $2,000 a month. And then 82% of the people poll want that stimulus check. <laughs> give me a check. <clears throat> they want that check. The stimulus check groups on Facebook are massive. I think America may vote in its best interest. So there is a really good chance that the Democrats can get the Senate and they have the House and the Senate. They can run. A, they can go around the president. And if Trump loses and they have, oh, stimulus checks are coming. Stimulus checks are coming. And when are the elections? November. This thing is going to be going on in November because there, there, there's not. I, I mean, I'm sorry, America. It's like I feel that you like my little child and I have to tell you that your favorite pet was ran over by a car. It's bad. It's bad. It's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse before it gets better. All right. So all that stuff. What should you be doing, America? I already said you should be stacking cash. And if you are fortunate enough to still have a job, you should be looking at ways to increase your income through a side business, eBay, Craigslist, whatever you can do. Because you have a job today. Because like one of the things is that many people feel that tech is immune. I recently went and looked at some tech job boards. Tech jobs are down. You don't want to know why tech is not an island. What makes tech go? Regular businesses. That's what makes techs go. A lot of people who were in tech got laid off. Why? Because the business, the tech company didn't have no business. So tech wasn't immune. So like you got a job today. You may not have a job tomorrow because they still laying off. Now, granted, the layoffs have slowed down. We went from 6.6 .6 million to I think 2 million got laid off last week. And this is another reason that there won't be a V-shaped recovery. See, a V-shaped recovery means we hit the bottom. We, we at the bottom, right? But we still going down. And we got to stop going down so we can come up. But we still going down. Pier 1 just filed just said they're closing their stores and this is just the first like Macy's is in trouble Macy's operating costs have been going up and their revenues have been dropping for years you will see more national retailers file for bankruptcy and close now once we hit the bottom yeah we can start going back up but see the thing is we're still going down this is why I'm like v-shaped recovery it's only going to take a quarter, third quarter, first quarter's toast, second quarter's toast. I don't see it. Looking at the math, looking at the facts, not being a Trump parrot like, well, yeah, the economy is going to turn around. Steve Mnuchin, he's never been poor. The man's worth four hundred million dollars. He don't know what it's like to suffer. And this is one of the things, too, about proximity. Steve Mnuchin, all his friends are millionaires. All his friends got money. A lot of his friends are sh driven by chauffeur lim chauffeur driven limousines. So when he looks out over his landscape, he says, well, the economy's fine. It's good. Because all his people, all the folks who are close to him, all the people in his circle, they good. So that's how come he sees it that way. Trump, same way. All people in Trump's or they got money. They good. But America, that ain't you. Over half of you in the workforce make less than $33,000 a year. 
lot of you are gig workers. Many of you have been unemployed for months and have not been able to get your unemployment benefits. Where is this V-shaped recovery coming from? Mars? Or is an alien going to drop a V-shaped recovery and we just going to explode with all this alien magic? It ain't happening. So what I want you to do, America, is go ahead, get my course, 30 days to 2,500, and start trying to serve your local community. Start trying to do that. And get the hustler's mindset to strengthen your mindset. Because you're going to need it. Because right now, you're going to be bombarded with all types of messages. It's an election year. You're going to be bombarded with the economies doing well. They're going to hang up the stock market, which is supported by the Fed. They're going to keep telling you it's good. And also, Google and do a YouTube search of investors who have sold all their stocks because they're like, this don't make any sense. They're getting out because the stock market is going up because it don't make no sense because they know what's coming. They know that a correction is on the horizon. And by the time we get to election, the stock market could be way down. And that doesn't look good for Trump. But once again, Trump seems to be like the Teflon Don. Nothing sticks to him. So we can see. I don't know, because there are many people who are like, well, no, no. You know, the Democrats want to do all this other stuff. But America, you want a stimulus check. I've, I, read, I read your comments on these stimulus check videos, America. I read how we can go to war. They got money for wars. What about getting me a check? Getting me out of my situation. I'm a taxpayer. I'm an American. Take care of me. So America. Buckle up, get ready, because we're going to see some crazy things that are going to happen. You know, many people challenge this, but if, because there, there was this picture of people in the stands at the football game during the Spanish flu era wearing masks, I think that's going to become a recent thing, because if we have football season, NFL season, people will be in the stands with masks. It's the craziest thing. But that's all I got for you, America. Get the courses, go ahead and start fashioning your own cape and becoming your own Superman. Because at the end of the day, no one's gonna save you. No one. I got another video, check it out. It's right there, check it out.